Frid och shalom vänner och välkomna till dagens sändning. Vi börjar med en video ifrån Sling and Stone som vi har översatt till svenska. Den är ungefär 10 minuter lång. Den handlar om den kommande världskyrkan som vi ser börjar växa fram. Som ska komma fram då samtidigt som det här politiska och ekonomiska systemet. Vi tar och tittar på det. Sen kommer det efter det lite klipp. Och sen avslutar vi sändningen sen. Guds välsignelse på er alla. 17 prophesies in the last days there will be a one world religion that's made up of all types of peoples and multitudes, nations and tongues. The Antichrist will be head over this religion and will eventually actually declare himself to be God. We're actually seeing the world at large move in this direction to accept a type of one world religion. We'll look at the emerging belief of Abrahamia, the uniting of all the Abrahamic religions under one faith. We'll see how this is a precursor to the Revelation 17 one world religion. And when this one fully comes on the scene, it will deceive the whole world. A few years ago, this article started circling around titled Abrahamia, a new religion on the horizon in which it speaks of all the Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam coming together under one faith. This could actually fit in with the Islamic faith, which already has 1.9 billion followers around the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we know we know that all the, the, the Judaism, mm -hmm. Christianity, and Islam, well, according to Muslims, they have the same God, right? So it would seem that, that there is a sort of fit there, you know, yes. if you wanted to create a religion, there is a fit. There, there is there is a there is a better chance, you might say, of of having a unification between these three mm -hmm. religi religions. A few years ago, Pope Francis said something along these similar lines, where we all come from the same God. He said in a video that had all the Abrahamic faiths within it that while people from various global faiths may be seeking God or meeting God in different ways, that it's important to keep in mind that we are all children of God. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. In the Western nations, we're seeing more of a mingling between Islam and Catholicism. This is what some people call Chrislam. Uh, let's have a, a middle ground where we have dialogue. We can have shared spaces. In the North American situation, we already have shared spaces. Many uh, Muslim Friday prayers, because of the large gathering, um, are held in churches uh, for the lack of uh, other suitable spaces. And our Christian neighbors are so generous in offering us these uh, uh, worship spaces. It's very important to realize that while we should be kind to other people and religions and try to teach to them the truth, commingling and accepting their beliefs as ours is completely against what the Bible states because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the Son of God and anyone who rejects him as the Son of God is operating under the spirit of an antichrist. And many of these religions, Islam included, don't believe that Jesus is part God or the Son of God. Islam also has the belief where they can lie to other people to further the progress of Islam. It's something known as Takia. And Yardin Marima, a sociologist from Columbia University, writes this about it. Takia is an Islamic juridical term whose shifting meaning relates to when a Muslim is allowed under Sharia law to lie. So if it progresses the cause of Islam, then Muslims can lie on the surface and not have any conviction about it. In the Quran 2 verse 120, it says, And never will the Jews or the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. Say indeed the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. If you were to follow their desires after what has come to you of knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. The Quran of course was made up by Muhammad, so there's contradictions all over the place. While that is one verse, another concept within Islam that we read is something known as Sula Kul, which means peace with all, universal peace, or perfect peace. So the possibility of a grafting in of these religions is something that's not completely out of the potential of happening, but it's of course important to remember that while 
Sometimes Islam could seem to start being friendly to Christian. They are allowed to lie and they are allowed to do anything for the progress of Islam. So we have to stand strong and true on what we know the truth is in the Bible. Two brief things along this subject worth mentioning, but I've covered in quite a lot of detail in the past, is the Abrahamic family house, where we have Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all at one worship center. They have their own buildings, and then they come together and unify and talk and discuss these things. This is in Abu Dhabi. A lot of this has also progressed since the Abrahamic Accord, which was signed in August of 2020, which started to bring a normalization between countries in the Middle East and peace with Israel. It's important to keep all of this in mind as we look for a potential for a one world religion, but what it seems is like this is kind of growing people to getting used to being a one world type of religion. But when the Revelation 17 religion comes, it will be on a way bigger deceptive scale than this. I'll get into that next, but I wanted to point out one more thing in relation to this Chrislam type of belief system. It's another clip from this video with the Islamic scholar, Dr. Shabir Ali, and he references one of the most prominent Christian churches in Canada, and they're uniting with Islam. Uh, but uh, the United Church of Canada, which is one of the largest uh, denominations in Canada, and uh, perhaps the largest, uh, uh, has actually declared in uh, a document that could be found on their website, at least it was the last time I looked, um, a document entitled, That uh, You May Know Each Other. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the words of that uh, title, in fact, actually come from the 49th surah of the Quran, the 13th verse, I believe, uh, which says, That you may know each other. Uh, so they, they uh, published that document to show their appreciation for some things Islamic. And they, they actually declared that uh, a Christian could believe that the Quran is the word of God, uh, and that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet of God, but not to that extent that will cause either the Quran or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, to uh, overshadow uh, the teachings and person and work of Jesus Christ. A huge war in the Middle East could trigger the arrival of the Antichrist and a uniting of all people under one belief system. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4 tells us this about the coming day of the Lord Jesus, and it tells us what will have to happen beforehand in verses 3 and 4. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So for something like this to happen where the Antichrist declares himself to be God, it will probably require something larger than just a uniting of the Abrahamic faith. Matthew 24, 24 tells us, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Something like alien contact or massive world war or the Antichrist coming onto the world stage to fix all of our problems or a similar combination of world-changing events is probably what it's going to take to unite under this Revelation 17 One World Religion. It's such a huge deception that everyone on earth will believe it unless your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 17, 8. The beast that you saw was and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. The lawless one, the Antichrist, will seem like he is God and will deceive these people and even these faiths who aren't rooted in the truth of Jesus and the Bible. 2 Thessalonians 2.9 Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The religions of the world will be deceived by this power and these lying signs and wonders. And because again, if your name isn't written in the Lamb's Book of Life, by accepting the truth of Jesus written in the Gospel and the Bible, you will be deceived by these massive deceptions. It's scary when we hear that the Antichrist will have all power and lying signs and wonders, and then what some of the religions of the world will say could unify us together. Mm -hmm. So short of God, uh, you know, reaching into the world with a divine revelation that says, you know what, you guys should all have this new one unified world religion. Uh, it, it seems hard to conceive of uh, this really 
taking effect and, and bringing people together uh, inspired by this new faith. I've already said it a few times, but it's key to not being deceived by this ultimate deception that unless you are a believer in Jesus Christ and the gospel and the Bible, there is coming a antichrist, the lawless one who will have all power, signs and lying wonders and will deceive everyone on the world into a new world religion, which he will ultimately declare himself to be the God of. So it's time to give your life to Jesus Christ, to follow the truth, study the Bible with your whole heart and start praying to Jesus. And he will reveal to you that he is in the Bible is the ultimate and absolute truth. I hope and pray you'll do that and leave in the comments if there's anything I can do to help you on that journey. I pray you're well. Thanks for watching and God bless.
Ja, Frid älskade vänner och den här bilden är ju underbar här med ordet och ljuset. Och det är det som gäller vänner om vi ska klara oss ända fram in igenom den smala porten. Så är det ju att följa Jesus och hans ord. Han säger ju själv att han är vägen, sanningen och livet och ingen kan komma till fadern utom genom honom. Och ja, det är ju inte något vi kan göra i egen kraft. Vi kan ju bara gå där hans fotspår har varit. Och det var ju det Abraham fick göra och vi ska ju vandra i Abrahams fotspår. Och när vi ser på Abrahams liv så ser vi ju tydligt att Gud har ju gått före honom i varenda steg som han tog och visat honom. Så kommer man till platser där man får vila ett par år och man fattar ingenting och vad är detta? Det händer ju inget. Och det där är väl våran svaghet kanske som människor. Att det måste hända något hela tiden. <laughs> ja, så är det ju med oss. Vi är ju väldigt otåliga ofta. Men halleluja, det han Gud han har en plan för dig min vän och för mig också. Och eh, vi ska vandra i förutberedda gärningar står det ju. Då måste ju Gud förbereda dem först innan vi kan vandra in på dem. Och ofta handlar det ju där om att vi inte klarar än i våra hjärtan eller också är det ju omständigheterna som ska förändras. Men det har vi ju sett och kan vittna om att när tiden är inne så förändras omständigheterna så att det kommer en öppning på något sätt. Den brukar komma till oss, det brukar komma ett förslag eller det brukar komma, ja, det är lite olika. Men Herren har lovat att vara med sitt folk och leda oss genom svårigheter och han kommer att leda dig också. Guds välsignelse ska vi här Elvor och jag och vi... Hörs under dagen här som vanligt på Telegram och hemsidorna. Gud för sig säger då. Amen.